about the democracy of involving the students i will give you examples of what my school did for me do you think it's the lack of having enough drama teachers that drama doesn't have that kind of a position in school years like k through 12 involve them he said of course there was a lot of opposition from teachers let me tell you that about including students in this decision making once my teachers could show that you know there is interest and there is inclination there is engagement of uh, the child uh, with theater uh, there was acceptance at home as well you are looking at is at extra curriculum it is not extra it should be in Rajit and Kanak such a pleasure and a privilege and an honor to be conversing with you here in front of a very very august audience so um we didn't want this to be a kind of a question and answer or a moderated session so we just thought it would be like rajit and kanak are in my living room and we are talking to each other and all of you are privy to what we speak yes so um rajit i just am so so glad that you're here you had your cups of tea i hope kanak more than one <laughs> more than one and uh, it's very interesting that we have two people from theater today and mm -hmm. one kind of from the arts and i say that about myself only because i work with so many artists and illustrators in creating our beautiful picture books and i have always wondered about people who take to theater because in schools in schools that i in the schools that i went to or uh, i graduated from uh, i don't think we ever had a drama period mm -hmm. and even if we did we had a music class which was once in a week but was there drama going around all the time <laughs> much, <laughs> dra <laughs> much drama that's true much yeah all, all different kinds of drama <sighs> and the one period which was assigned to a music class was always taken away by something else maybe mathematics or syllabus <laughs> syllabus exactly syllabus exam not complete so no music session today exactly so rajit tell me this and kanak you too how what is it when you decided that you want to be wanted to be an actor was it something that the school ever nourished or was it your home and your wonderful the parents the entire credit goes to my teachers <gasps> yeah that was a surprising answer i might say yeah. i still do i'm still in touch mm -hmm. with some of my teachers some of them are beyond 80 years of age and cannot walk but i am so lucky and so fortunate that i think i had the best teachers in the world which school did you go to rajesh <laughs> <laughs> i went to cathedral and john conn school in south bombay mm -hmm. and one my english teacher has just retired as a principal of cathedral and john conn school wow and i called her the moment i saw it in the papers my hair is already standing on end mm. because she taught me how to write english sentences correctly I remember she almost gave me a zero and that was in 10th standard and she says what is this one sentence is going into the other for a full page there's no comma there's no full stop and it didn't bother me that she made me sit after school for half an hour for a few days mm. and just correct that that's but, the trouble she took yeah but that was with english right i'm talking about theater is much more we than had forget the theater we mm. had carpentry classes we had mm. home science we had painting we had elocution we were lucky that we had this offered to us and without prejudice so we had five of us boys doing cooking in the home science while six girls went to do carpentry mm. that's the openness we had again all credit to my teachers excellent that they didn't see it by compartmentalizing things for us you know you and i could have been co-actors had i gone to cathedral, cathedral. school you can still be my co-actor <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> loss of time you can do no it now shobha <laughs> that, that guarantee i will give you that's what my teachers have taught see, me see this is wonderful that's the power of the teacher 
एंड दैट पावर ऑफ द टीचर आई गिव यू एन एग्जांपल छह साल की छोटी लड़की घर में जाती है शी डज अ होमवर्क एंड मामा करेक्ट्स इट एंड शी सेज मामा यू आर रॉन्ग दिस इज नॉट द वे टू डू इट माय टीचर सेज दिस इज द वे दैट्स द पावर ऑफ द टीचर दैट दैट चाइल्ड दैट 6 ईयर ओल्ड हुज माइंड इज बीइंग शेप्ड अप बाय ऑल यू पीपल देन एंड नाउ दैट्स द पावर and we were talking about inclusion you know about the democracy of involving the students i will give you examples of what my school did for me as the prefect body we had a plus 2 so we were you know uh, there in school i did my plus 2 in school there was this huge issue about changing the timings of the school mm. now the teachers decide the principal decides but our principal called us all the prefects 12 of us in his room and says there is discussion about changing the timing of the school i want to know what each one of you think boom no one had ever put that to us that we have a part in that decision making mm. suddenly we became responsible members of that school that we have a say we have a the, the possibility of suggestion and the fact mm. that what we say may matter and that kind of attitude of including that student body you know the long term repercussions were that it brought down so much of the aggression and misbehavior mm. because then my my principal colonel simian started doing that with even the lower classes Class. standard 10 because a lot of the students would leave after 10 mm. involve them he said of course there was a lot of opposition from teachers let me tell you that about including students in this decision making but he broke that and he trusted us he trusted that 17 year old mm. that is important wow you know sorry if i'm digressing no <laughs> it's all very i just mean very, that the, for me that the power of the teacher because i think i am just so so lucky mm. because it's them and here you who have have that shaped me mm. that I I'm able to think out of the box I'm able to think openly because of my teachers mm. kanak so, so, just kanak, jump yeah, in yeah, did yeah. you did you also have such a wonderful teacher that did no so before you? i get into that answer snehal okay. said that you know getting on stage as a first speaker is very very tough Well, Snehal, you're sitting right next to two living legends. It's really, really tough. I can promise you that. One, one. <laughs> no. no. So, growing up, you know, I would watch you on TV. I always thought you were Bengali. I, I was, <laughs> it was you were so, so good. So, yeah. If I break into a sweat, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, nervousness and nothing else. The air conditioning is just. Fine. I'll hold your hand. Don't worry. <laughs> Great. No. So, I I resonate with his answer. It, uh, you know uh, growing up i was a very shy kid and i mm. thought that i was reserved uh, and i would not talk in class and my teachers pointed out uh, you need to do, do more uh, one of my teachers had me tested and uh, you know i was dyslexic and uh, you know nowadays anyone who's seen tari zameen par is an expert on <laughs> dyslexia absolutely uh, uh, but uh, you know and uh, my teacher put me on stage and she said that you know let's just work together and i said you know what no one's gonna want to work with me mm. and she said that uh, well why don't you write a play imagine yourself as a lead character and let's see as to how it goes and how old how old were you then uh, class 7 class 7 yeah 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 wow and uh, by the time i was in grade 11 i could found a theater company which oh is my. even now considered one of the most wow. <laughs> one of the most prolific english theater groups in the country and you know I give all that credit to my to my teachers. Mm. Uh, they were the ones who encouraged. No one judged. Uh, I come from you know a business family, and no one really cared about uh, the art elements at all. But uh, once my teachers could show that you know there is interest and there is inclination, there is engagement of uh, the child right. uh, with theatre, uh, there was acceptance at home as well, and the home environment then changed. 
which was very, very important. Yes. yes. There, there you're lucky. <laughs> I, I wasn't lucky in that aspect. Kya hmm. yeah, actor banega? <laughs> Papa said, shakal dekhi hai shishe mein, hangar lagta hai, tu kya actor banega? So, but it matters. It does matter. The home environment. And as, as the lady said, no, the involvement of the parent today, hmm. they, they mentioned that just yeah, now, right. is so important. But as I said, to counter that opposition at home, I had fantastic teachers. Teachers. The hmm. other fortunate, I would say for my school was, we had a school counselor. Hmm. Huge difference. Mm -hmm. Believe me, personally for me, it was, then I need to share that personal experience with you. That for a 16 year old whose family is breaking apart and whose parents are almost separating, it was traumatic. Hmm. I only had to walk into the counselor's office. Mrs. Bappert, I can never forget her. Four foot, one inch. <laughs> but formidable. She didn't ask me a word. She knew that if some child is walking into her office, obviously there's a problem. She didn't sit down and say, okay, now come on, tell me what is your problem. You have a problem. Nothing. I sat down and all she did was hold my hand. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I just cried. She never asked me a question. She said, 20 minutes are up. You have your class. The door is open. Come whenever you want. I only talked to her the next time I went. That's all she did. Why I'm coming to that point is, what is very, very sad today is that we have to teach compassion. Horrible. And if that is happening, then we need to rethink because that is what is missing in our education system. Drastically. Why do we need to teach compassion? There are compassion being taught in schools, America, wherever it may be. But the fact that we've reached that point, I think is for us to relook into ourselves. That Rajaji, I'm gonna jump in and ask please you. Please jump in. And uh, Shobhaji, a question. Uh, you, you're, you rightly said that, you know, you have to teach compassion. Uh, nowadays, it's become a, a norm. Is it because teaching is not happening by choice, but as a standby profession or yeah, I had nothing else to do, so I became a teacher? We are not encouraging, incentivizing people to become teachers? Possibly. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that, Shubha? We should ask. We should ask. <laughs> No, it's a very important point. It's a very valid point, no, what you're uh -huh. raising. No, teachers, what you say is absolutely uh, true, Kanak. That is, teaching uh, for many, I'm not talking about the people gathered in the room here, at least the teachers that, many teachers that I have encountered is teaching. The husband brings in the bacon, so to speak, and the wife has got a spare time in her hands. The children have started going to school. Chalo, hum bhi kuch kaam kara. To teacher ban jate. To teacher ban jate. Vacation ka vacation hai, jab bachchoon ko vacation. And I'm occupied. You know? Yeah, exactly. Point. Yeah. So, uh, they and are And society involved. mein batane ko rahega ki hum kuch kaam kar rahe hain. Yeah. And they are involved. Oh, and I'm a professor. With, I'm a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> with being a big thing. Teacher. It's a big thing. Yeah. But their involvement is to that extent, hmm. uh, you know, uh, to uh, and this much and nothing more kind of a thing. So if we want to have uh, teachers like um, Rajat had, or you clearly have had because you've set up a company for uh, actors, then uh, we require uh, maybe different kinds of teachers. But coming to your, uh, your remark about compassion, Rajat, and even you, Kanak, don't you think that when you take on uh, uh, the role, uh, not a role, uh, when you get into theater, that Gee. all the attributes of uh, theater, not just acting, whether it's set design, playwriting, you know, directing, all of it, all of it that combines to what we call theater, mm. that one of the attributes would be learning teamwork and of working course. together and therefore within that ambit you can't not be compassionate right other than what your roles teach you if you are if you are yes. having the role of a particularly compassionate character that in itself is your life lesson isn't it no you're absolutely uh, right that the whole involvement with theater indirectly brings in compassion 
And it's not just teamwork, because teamwork can be there in, a, in the cricket team or in the hockey team as well. Mm. This is a different kind of compassion which inculcates and imbibes acceptance and sharing amongst each other. Because, and that is because of the process of rehearsal. Right. You're not just learning five lines and saying, okay, now I got to learn this and I yeah. got to deliver this tomorrow. No. When you're doing theater the way we have learned in the very basic traditional format mm. is that the process requires probably two, three months. So for two, three months, please correct me and jump yeah. in. You're engaged <laughs> with X number of people. Mm. You don't know who they are. They could yeah. be st strangers to begin with. But you have to learn through that process of rehearsal to, to share, to accept, and indirectly that compassion comes into it. Yeah. Of course, there's a clash of egos, but it's exactly that clash of egos that's broken down. Hmm. Hum hai, shunya pe jaiye, back hmm. to zero. When I do workshops, my first thing is, can we start from zero? Hmm. And it shakes people up, <laughs> you know? I said, that's where you need to start. You can't start yeah. from one and two. No, but the people feel, no, we, we know one and two and three, so let's mm. start from five. No, you start from zero. That's why it's called zero. And it's all <laughs> encompassing. The shape is also, all these things have, have a meaning. Yeah. That shape of zero means hell of a lot. Mm. Now, Rajaji, I strongly believe that, you know, as a theater artist, you don't act for yourself, you act for your co-actor. That's one of the basic tenets. And mm. that brings in a lot of empathy, compassion, and also a lot of... You uh, act with your co-actor for that the production. audience. Uh, right. Sorry, I'm just yeah, rephrasing yeah. that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, but, uh, but why is it then? Do you think it's the lack of having enough drama teachers that drama doesn't have that kind of a position in school years, like K through 12? We don't have drama teachers, ma'am. Yeah. We, we don't. don't have drama teachers. <laughs> Lament. Should we, should we not make that? Uh, I, I even think there's no, um, uh, when we create picture books, I always think there's no school in India which teaches children's illustration. It's a small uh, two week uh, course within an NID or a Srishti or something, but there's no full fledged four years of learning how to illustrate a children's book, because what, that's what it takes. And even with drama, that in school, I don't find any, it's the class teacher who is everything, who's drama teacher, who's music teacher, who's even PT teacher sometimes, you know? But Shobhaji, so, I think mm -hmm. the basic of uh, theater education in our school system, and you know, I've had this conversation with the boards as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you talk about theater, mm -hmm. If you talk about anything to do with drama, right. automatically you're going to jump into Shakespeare, as you like it, that's and Twelfth Night, thing. and that's yeah. what we have in our yeah. schools. And I love Shakespeare. I'm not saying there's nothing yeah. wrong but with theater Shakespeare. Theater is not Shakespeare. Exactly. This is, hello. Am I loud and clear. Theater is not Shakespeare. Exactly. Yeah, it's a misconception. Exactly. Yeah. So, or but, you know, theater in a lot of so-called social political discussions. Ye to extra curriculum hai. <laughs> and I just cover my face and I said, that's the bloody problem. <laughs> you are looking at is that extra curriculum. It is not extra. It should be in. Yeah. That's the problem. So uh, we get back to the learning outside the classroom again. Uh, you know Vish, all of you know Vish by now. Vish comes from a family of musicians. And he's a very accomplished vocalist and a mridangist. And when I got married, I came from a family where music was zero. And uh, I was so fascinated in the manner in which uh, music uh, enveloped their house, you know. And Vish would regale you with stories about from the time, I think from the time they popped out of their mother's womb, I think his father started playing. Uh, concerts in the little tape recorder and his brothers are musicians. Vish is a musician. Oh my God, Shobha, there are so many examples. Take yeah. your top scientists in the world. Yeah. 
They are all musicians. Yes, but Homi the... Baba would play the violin. I... Nehru was playing the piano for God's Look sake. Look at the best I investment know, bankers. What I'm to they all have music backgrounds. Why are they what they are? Because of that. But it was not learnt in the yeah. classroom or in the school. Absolutely. That it was learnt outside the school, just like. So therefore, the parent actors. again becomes yes. important, as That's the ladies true. pointed out. That's that. True. that that participation of that teacher and that parent. Again, Shobha, we were lucky because yes. we had a very, very active parent-teacher association in our school who met every month. Hmm. And all issues were discussed with the school teacher. There was a body and the parent-teacher association. Of course, they're going to be matters of disapproval and maybe, you know, uh, let's say opposition there is a discussion that lends cohesion to that kind of thinking. Rajaji, most educators in this room would agree the big problem we all face now is the lack of respect towards the teacher from a lot of parents. I totally agree with ah, you. Yes. I've had parents saying, this is not problem, it's the teacher's problem. Hai. I said, ah, ah, sorry, you're wrong. You are also spending time with your child. You can't just say teacher's problem. Hai. Then you're not, you're not a very responsible parent. Yeah. But Kanak, then are we at an impasse? Can we not ever crack this? I mean, get drama into school or serious music into school or serious art into... I think we of course we can yeah. crack it. We can crack it. I, I don't see the problem at all. It just depends on the initiative and the... I hate, I don't want to use the word, but it's true because this is what comes from education. Is we don't want to take the risk. I've heard this line. I said, yeah. risk? You're talking about your future generation. You're using the word risk. That's appalling. I'm going to Shulini University at the end of this month, which is in Himachal. Very quiet. Nobody knows about Shulini University. It's one of the top in the world as far as student impact is concerned. Yeah. It's the only one in India that is in the top 200. Why? Because of their involvement of the student in every form. Mm -hmm. They want a performing arts thing, so they contacted me. I said... I can't devise it, but I can help you. I'm there for two nights at the end of this month just to help them help, if at all possible, to put something together to get drama and theater also connected with the education system that they have prevailing there. Mm. Also, you need to think beyond, as educators, think beyond just teaching a particular dramatic text in the classroom. Absolutely. Use it as a pedagogical tool. Engage yeah. the children, have workshops, understand that the 21st century skills that the NEP talks about. Kanak, in the 11th standard, our English teacher says we are not going to touch the syllabus for a month. I am very confident that I will be able to handle it in the rest of the year. Mm. So Fantastic. for the first month, she brought poetry that we would have never heard about. She did one Shakespeare play because she said, you need to know. So we did that for that first one month in class during English. We didn't touch the syllabus. I am mm. not saying... <laughs> That's the way out. Please don't get me wrong. But the openness, that came from my teacher. Hmm. Mrs. Kochar, I still stand up and salute her. She's going to be 90, I think, next week. Hmm. Bless her. That's her. No, so, and also, hmm. uh, so text is one thing. Pedagogy is the other thing. Other thing. We also need to look at what life skills is theatre bringing in. We were exactly. talking about agility. Yeah, I was going to talk to you yes. about that. Yeah. Yes. We are talking about agility. Yeah. We are talking about decision making. I promise you, if you are performing a scene on stage and your co-actor is having samosas uh, and you have to wax eloquent on stage, I promise you nothing gives you more agility than that moment on stage <laughs> when 500 people are watching I'm, you. You know, Kanak, agility is one part which is a consequence, yeah. I would say. The process of rehearsal when you work on a play in theatre is, what is it allowing the mind to do? Yes. Making choices. Mm. Yeah. Right? Mm. You are redoing that scene over and over again every day for two, three months. So what are you doing? If I technically break it down, mm. analyzing, mm. and this comes indirectly without you focusing or saying, I'm going to analyze. No, it happens. It's organically making the mind analytical, telling you these are choices. So what is the choice you're going to make? Because X choice will result in Y, Z. B will result in C, D, G. So the process of rehearsal, in a way, is actually 
allowing your mind to explore sure mm. analyze choose decide without prejudice that's the important mm. thing so, yes absolutely absolutely yeah i think Very the life skills that theater brings uh, I, I think it's unparalleled. This is something. So I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, theater and also the OTT platforms now. Yes. We were talking about it this morning <laughs> before you came in. Yes. So there is a lot of energy that you connect with the audience when you're performing on stage. Live. Uh, yeah. We can see it now as well. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> but with the OTT platform, what uh, Shobhaji and I were talking about, is it taking away the essence of the art and making it very, very uh, technical? No, on the, on the contrary, mm -hmm. because mm. what is happening is you're making a film, let's say. It's two hours long now. Mm. We don't have the attention span to sit through a three hour film anymore. anymore. <laughs> so 90 minutes, 120 minutes. What happened with TV is, is endless stretching, 105 episodes or then the story is not So what the OTT has allowed our creative faculty members, if I may use the term, is to use content and be able to express it without the limitations of the two-hour film and without being open to this endless saga. So your story can be six episodes or eight or ten, depending on which platform you are engaged with. So it's allowing that creative writer and director to create things. And I think it adds to storytelling. Someone from the audience just said formulaic. It's just formula Formulae. on OTT. Well, it may become a formula soon. We are heading in that direction. You're not wrong or whoever said that is not wrong. As of now, it's given a lot of creative writers and directors to, to deal with subjects and issues that they were never allowed to do before. So the last five years, I think, has been the good phase. It may go the television way. I think, to some extent, it's already going there. You see, so much of crap, some of it, <laughs> in the garb of creativity. That's also there. But then, wo balance to honi wala hai. The good, bad, the ugly, all coexist together. You can't separate. But at least it's allowed that creative mind to explore. And for me, that's a big thing. So you're right. So there's so much of garbage. And I work extensively in Uttar Pradesh, mm. Bihar. And every city that I work in becomes a TV series, be it a Mirzapur <laughs> or be it a Kasganj. And then my family is really scared that are you going to go there and you're going to get murdered <laughs> whenever you go there. But wo, wo hai. I agree with you. All the Suddenly, I think in these last three years, we've got all these, uh, you know, Northern Belt, uh, aggressive gun sword dramas. Mm. I think that bubble has burst, you know. Mm. And there'll be a phase, like how we had a phase of the television Saas Bahu, and for five years <laughs> that went on. But the audience is discerning, they'll switch off. Are my mom still watches it, okay? Oh, good for <laughs> you then. <laughs> <laughs> but there are such beautiful stories of India. For example, right. Shobhaji, you have wonderful stories through Karadi Tales. Right, right. Yeah. The, Look, the our, illustrations our, are... Our country is so <laughs> rich for storytelling. No other country in the world simply because of this diversity of ours is, is like a feather in our cap. Yeah. It's just that half of us have not realized it only. Yeah. But, uh, but it's interesting that you ask this question about the OTT platforms. Uh, during the pandemic, of course, uh, nothing was open. Theater halls were shut, films, uh, the movie theaters were shut. And I had a conversation with Mr. Nasiruddin Shah. And he did a lot yeah. of... Uh, uh, plays and productions with no audience in front of him. Like it would be a Zoom thing or it may not even have been on Zoom. And I asked him because he's, I remember him earlier telling me very often that the energy that the actor yeah. gets is from the audience. He draws the energy. Of course. And so of it's course. so important, especially for a theatre actor, to have this live audience. But he was, he was singing a different song now in the sense he said, I thought it would be a challenge, but it was not important anymore. And I could do it imagining the audience in front of me. And in, in some ways, he said, it freed me. I mean, is this something that you've experienced? You know, it's, a, it's a very debatable thing. I know what Nasir <laughs> is saying because I've discussed it with him. Mm. When we were caught in that pandemic, mm. 
it, it took a lot out of me to try and put stories about the lockdown together and try to sell them on Zoom and all. It went against my thinking. I don't know good, bad, whatever, but I still strongly believe, as one of the ladies mentioned, mm -hmm. human contact. Mm -hmm. We're talking, I'm coming back to the earlier topic about technology. We are losing human contact. Mm -hmm. I have refused all workshops on, on Zoom, Zoom and huh? online. <laughs> no means no, I said. If you don't value that human contact, which I need with my student or my members, then bye-bye, don't call me again. And I have to be that firm because that fear is there. Mm. What do you if people say ease that into that, that, then haa ho jayega. Chalo, camera laga do, yaar, ye bethe na yaar pe, ye pura session record ho raha hai, laga do. Nahi. What you are going to watch this session on camera is not the same thing as what I am feeling with you. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's 100% you know, true. Yeah. I was only So it's okay that. to make it work, to try and work, but I, I, I don't think it's really working. Sh Shobhaji, I think if you have that conversation with uh, Mr. Shah now, huh. I feel, and you know, I might be wrong, but I feel his opinion would be slightly different. No, I was only talking in respect to the pandemic, you know, because... We know, tried, uh, yeah. and it, it's Absolutely. there, yeah. and it's not that it was bad, you know, yeah. I had excellent actors. We said, let's try and put together stories about the lockdown. Yeah. And we reach out. And we were reaching out to, you know, Los Angeles and, you know, uh, people sitting across the globe, mm. which was fine. But for me, if I have to present that same thing now with mm. a live audience, mm. it's a different feeling. Yeah. The connect is different because there's a synergy. There's a transferring of human yeah. energy, which cannot be... Uh, replaced at all. So all no as teachers, way. we believe, right, like there's experience and engagement uh, of the student. Initially, I think we all enjoyed teaching uh, via Zoom or whatever, but I think now everyone would agree that, you know, that touch, that connect. Right. We, should, we should ask that to, to them. them. Yeah. Because they are on, on board. They are, they are there in the thick of it. They should be telling us what you know, they since, feel. Uh, Rajit, since they are listening into our conversation, <laughs> I hope let's, so. <laughs> let's have them ask us. Yes, I would like to. You. I would like I mean, to engage yeah. you people because, you know, we say the children are the future of tomorrow. Bullshit! You are the future because you're, uh, you know, you're going to be changing their mindset. Uh, Thank Sorry. you firstly for the insight and, and the conversations. It's almost like we are in with you having coffee, <laughs> except yeah. the coffee is missing right there. But just coming back, you are absolutely right in terms of the absenteeism has reduced drastically. Hmm. Um, I, I was uh, at a conference where there was a university professor and he said, you know, the first week and the month on. Kids cried in the first week, and not just the first day. These are university students. Yeah. And this was the UPS uh, uh, University. Kids cried the first week. So human connections can never be replaced. You're absolutely never. right. And in view of that, I want to know your insight for uh, learners. Class of 84. Loved it. I want to know, you as an actor, you as a learner in that entire cast of stellar actors, you spoke something about how the egos came crushing down to complete zero. What was the learning process for you? How did it come to making yourself vulnerable to give your best out to us? Brilliant question. And I'm glad you gave such a brilliant example. Class of 84 is a play that we've been doing for almost 20 years now. Mm. We still want to do it. And classic example, because all eight of us actors who never knew each other are very close today. And we just had a reunion a month ago just to connect because we lost touch. Now, to break up what you were saying, how those egos came crashing down is when we were thrown, I knew Shanaz Patel, she's my business partner in Rage Productions. But between the eight of us, we've never connected. How do we create that trust? So again, the process of rehearsal during when we began, 
that every actor is trying to feel his or her way through, we are making mistakes. And every time one makes a mistake, oh, there are seven others watching, what are they gonna think? <laughs> that helped break down. So we were all slowly making mistakes and gradually trusting each other and helping each other as we went along. We finished act one, such an example you've given me, and, and I'll actually break it down for you. And one day the writer and director, Rahul, who's my colleague said, guys, I don't know what act two is all about. I forgot to tell you I've not written it. <laughs> and we said, what? You mean you only did it in the first half? He said, yeah, I was afraid to tell you. I was afraid of what you all would think. So with his inputs and with the eight of us, we gradually tried to create act two. And then he wrote it after one week of rehearsal. Mm. <laughs> Egos being crashed down. On stage, the same issues. I'll give you one classic example where on stage, I think uh, at the Blue Diamond Hotel outside in the open in Pune. Mm. Normally, we don't use mics. I don't like actors using mics. Otherwise, they don't learn to project. But because it was outdoors, there were disturbances. We were all given these mics to speak. Somewhere in the beginning, I think in the first half an hour, mic, mic went off. So, and the other seven, only one of them realized it. Because what I was doing was, in order to say my lines, I kept going next to somebody and talking. <laughs> and I kept doing this. And one of my co-actors was horrified. He said, what the hell is Rajit doing? You know, he's changed all the moves, everything. But he didn't realize. So every time I'd go next to him, he'd move away. I said, oh my God. But the others caught on. So they made the effort to keep coming to me when they knew I had my line. Ego's going down, we need to help each other. There are many such examples, I won't bore you with that, but classic example, and in a nutshell is that, you know, now when we meet or we talk to each other in 20 years, that's the beauty. So, Shobhaji, what he's laid out essentially is, uh, you know, every skill that an educator should have, every skill that you aspire for the children to have, uh, presentation Absolutely. skills, yeah. teamwork, uh, thinking on your feet, decision making. These are things that we would like for the children to have. Uh, these are the skills. Look at Improvisation. The yeah. Yeah, improvise is another, I hate to say, but a rather bastardized Dude. word <laughs> because now people say we have to teach improvisation and that is acting a no <laughs> we won't go into that that's an entire session Shobha uh, no I meant uh, <laughs> improvisation in terms of thinking on your feet yeah, yeah. but I think the important <laughs> point that you raised uh, Kanak and, and ma'am did just now about breaking down egos leads eventually to building trust mm. yeah. with each other and I think as I'm going to call myself an educator today, okay? As educators and educationists, that is what we need to inculcate. That trust will come with compassion. And therefore, for me, that key word even now is compassion. If Mrs. Bapat had not held my hand, I don't think I would have easily come out of that situation. That was compassion and trust. It came as a, as a consequence. You know, we... we Every child has their own peculiarity or specificity, if we may use the term. But to we and you more than me today are, are not just teachers. You are counselors, you are educationists, you are psychologists. You are so, so much more. You are part parent. Yeah. Mm. That child is spending so much time with you. What you say is important to that child. Power is you. So we have such a huge responsibility. And I'm only saying it because it takes me back to when I was eight, Shobha, and before I didn't know I was going to become an actor. And they mm. said, what do you want to become? And I, I believe I said teacher. Mm. And now last year, and particularly in the pandemic, I realized that I have to go back to that. Mm. Wow. Maybe I was 
born to be a teacher. Thank you so much and thanks all of you for being a part of our conversation.